time on Nick Jr. Gently, gently, clear for takeoff. Oh, fiddlesticks. There, there. Don't be glum, chum. Erase that pouty face. These things take time. Have you ever heard the story of the tortoise and the hare? Say, here's our pal Cedric the Entertainer. Cedric, have you heard the tale of the tortoise and the hare? Are you kidding me, Moose? Of course. Well, I think Z here could really use a good fable right about now. Well, Z, it all went down like this. A bunch of animals were sitting around talking about this and that, mostly that. And this hare comes up, looking an awful lot like a rabbit, if you ask me. And he says, hey, y'all, have I mentioned lately how incredibly quick I am? How utterly fast and speedy I move? And the animals just sat there, fuming and seething. You know, Z, no one likes a boastful bunny. Anyway, the hare says, come on, who wants to race me? Who wants me to lick them in a race, lickety-split? Who's in the mood to lose? Well, the little tortoise inch forward, looking a lot like a turtle, if you ask me. And he pipes up and says, me, I'll race you, rabbit. So the hare bust out laughing. <laughs> you, said the hare, you must be crazy. I'll have crossed the finish line before you even break a sweat. But if that's the way you want it, then let's do it. The animals gathered around, and at the count of three, one, two, three, the two racers took off. Well, the hare took off as fast as lightning down the road, so all you could see was a cloud of dust. And that poor little tortoise, he just plodded along, one short stubby tortoise leg after the other. The hare was so far ahead, he said, man, that guy will never catch up. I'll just take a little snooze before I watch Shell Boy lose. And the hare decided to lay down under a tree for a brief nap. Meanwhile, the tortoise kept going, doing his best, slowly putting one foot in front of the other. And when the hare woke up, imagine his surprise to see the tortoise crossing the finish line. The tortoise had won the race. And do you know why, Z? Because everybody knows slow and steady wins the race. Yep. If you keep at something, little by little, you will get there. Now, Z, don't you have a model airplane to finish? Now that's entertainment. Yep. Read with your kids for 20 minutes every day and inspire a lifetime love of learning. Once upon a time in a pretty little town, there lived a pretty little girl who always wore a little red riding hood. She wore it so often, she was called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said to her, Dear daughter, your grandma is feeling ill. Please take this basket of yummy food to her. Now, when a mean old wolf who was always spying on Little Red Riding Hood heard this, he wanted the food for himself. So he hatched a very nasty plan. He ran to Grandma's house as fast as his legs would carry him. When he got there, he knocked on the door. Who is it? said Grandma. Why, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood, said the wolf in his sweetest voice. And his voice was so sweet, it fooled Grandma into unlocking the door. Well, when Grandma saw it was the wolf, she ran right out of the house to get help. Then, the wolf sprang into action. He put on Grandma's nightgown and nightcap, and got into Grandma's bed, pulling the covers up right to his nose. What a great plan, <laughs> chuckled the wolf. Right then, there was a knock at the door. Who is it? said the wolf in his sweetest Grandma voice. Why, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood, said the voice from outside. When Little Red Riding Hood came in, she looked at the bed and said, Grandma, what big ears you have. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf, still hiding under the covers. Grandma, what big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. 
the better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf. Grandma, what big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to eat you with, cried the wolf, and he jumped out of the bed. Just then, Grandma came running into the house. She brought a woodcutter to help her. The woodcutter grabbed his axe, waved it at the wolf, and started chasing him back into the woods. The wolf forgot all about eating Little Red Riding Hood and ran away as far and as fast as his legs would carry him. After their great adventure, Little Red Riding Hood and Grandma thanked the brave woodcutter and gave each other a big hug. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who went out in the world to build their homes and seek their fortunes. Each little pig built a house to live in. The first little pig built a house out of straw. The second little pig built a house out of sticks. And the third little pig took a little more time and built a sturdy little house made entirely out of bricks. A big bad wolf came upon the street where the three little pigs lived side by side. Hmm, he thought. Roast pig. He knocked on the door of the first house. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, came the pig's answer. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow the house in. Which he did easily, because the house was made of straw. The first little pig ran over to his sister's house made of sticks next door. Soon the wolf came knocking. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow the house in. And he huffed, and he puffed, and the house of sticks came tumbling down. Escaping just in time, the two little pigs ran to their brother's house. Luckily, the third little pig had been smart enough to build his house out of bricks. Again, there came a banging at the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me in. Not by the hair of our chinny chin chins. And I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow the house in. And the wolf huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed. But this time, nothing happened. Not even a big storm could knock down the brick house. Spying the chimney. The wolf climbed down and landed with a splash in a big boiling kettle the little pigs had waiting in the fireplace. You're in hot water now, laughed the three little pigs. A spider named Anansi had six sons, each named for the one thing that son could do best. One son was called Sea Trouble because he could see trouble a mile away. One son was called Road Builder because he liked to build roads. One son was called Stone Thrower, because he liked to throw stones. One son was called Cushion, because he had a big belly for his brothers to bounce on. One son was called River Drinker, because he liked to drink water from the river. And the sixth son was called Fish Catcher, because he liked to catch fish whenever he was hungry. One day, Anansi was very late coming home. Sea Trouble climbed the tree and saw a terrible sight. Oh no, he shouted. Father has fallen into the river and has been swallowed by a big fish. Quick, follow me, said the son named Road Builder. He made a road for the sons to climb down the riverbank. When they got there, the son named River Drinker drank the river dry. Along came the fish that swallowed their father. The son named Fish Catcher quickly scooped up the fish, cut it open, and out sprung Anansi. Everyone was very happy. Yeah! But what do you think happened then? Suddenly, a hungry hawk swooped down and grabbed Anansi. Stone Thrower picked up a stone and threw it at the hawk. Bam! He was right on target. And down from the sky tumbled Anansi. But luckily, Anansi had nothing to fear. The son named Cushion was there to save the day. Anansi was very grateful to have such helpful sons. And the next night, he came upon the perfect thank you gift, a beautiful glowing ball for them to share. 
But the ball was so wonderful, each of the sons wanted it for himself. It's mine. Give it to me. Mine. Let me have give it. The sons mine. kept on arguing. So Anansi decided to give the glowing ball back to Nyame, the sky god, who brought the glowing ball with him back up to the sky, where it became the moon that shines down upon us to this very day. Long ago, a boy named Jack lived with his mother in a little house. They were very poor and very hungry. All they owned was a cow. Jack, take the cow and sell her in the market so we will have money to buy food. Setting out for town, Jack came upon an old man. Hey, I'll trade you five beans for your cow. Beans, said Jack. Oh, but these are magic beans. Jack traded the cow for the beans and ran home. His mom was not happy. Beans! What good are these? Go to your room now, young man. When Jack woke up the next morning, he saw a giant beanstalk rising into the sky. It had grown from the beans. Jack climbed the beanstalk until he reached a cloud, and there was a huge castle. Jack sneaked in. The furniture was gigantic. Then came a booming voice. Fee-fi-fo-fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. And there he stood, an ugly giant, tall as a tree. Jack hid until he went away. Then Jack heard another voice. It came from a little hen trapped in a cage. Please save me from the mean giant. Jack freed the hen, and they ran for the beanstalk. But the giant was right behind them. Boom, boom, went his giant feet. As Jack reached the ground, the giant was coming down the beanstalk after them. Jack's mother grabbed an axe and began to chop down the stalk. The giant quickly climbed back up the cloud. I'm glad you're safe, said Jack's mom. But now our cow is gone and all we have is this hen. Then the hen laid an egg of solid gold. They were rich beyond their wildest dreams. Jack, she said, I think we're going to live happily ever after. Once upon a time, in a house in the woods, lived three bears, Papa Bear, Mama Bear, and Baby Bear. One morning, Papa Bear made porridge for his family, but it was too hot to eat, so the bears went for a walk while it cooled down. A little girl named Goldilocks smelled something delicious and followed it right into the bear's house. She tasted Papa Bear's bowl of porridge, but it was too hot. Mama Bear's porridge was too cold. Baby Bear's porridge was just right, so Goldilocks ate it all up. Yummy! Then Goldilocks was tired, so she sat in Papa Bear's chair, but it was much too hard. She tried Mama Bear's chair, but it was much too soft. Baby Bear's chair was just right, but she rocked on it back and forth so many times, it broke into pieces. Now Goldilocks was very tired. So she tried Papa Bear's bed. It was much too hard. She tried Mama Bear's bed. It was much too soft. Then she tried Baby Bear's little bed. It was just right, and Goldilocks fell fast asleep. Soon the three bears came home and saw someone had tasted Mama and Papa Bear's porridge and had eaten Baby Bear's porridge all up. In the living room, someone had sat in Mama and Papa Bear's chairs, and Baby Bear's chair was broken into pieces. Upstairs, Mama and Papa Bear's beds were a mess, and Baby Bear saw what looked like a pile of blankets on his bed. Someone has been sleeping in my bed, Baby Bear cried so loud that he woke up Goldilocks. Ah! screamed Goldilocks when she saw the bears. Ah! screamed the bears as Goldilocks ran down the stairs and right out of their house. Once upon a time, there lived a turtle that played beautiful music with his flute in the forest. One day, a man walking through the forest heard the music. And when he saw the turtle, he decided to bring him home to make turtle soup. He put the turtle in a cage and told his children, Don't let this turtle out. And he went back to work in his garden. The turtle played his flute and danced, which made the children laugh. Then the turtle stopped. Dance some more, said the children. There's not enough room in this cage. Let me out, and then I can, said the turtle. So the children opened the cage, and the turtle began to dance closer and closer to the woods. Suddenly, he danced right under a bush and disappeared into the forest. Worried that their father would be mad, the children painted a rock to look like the turtle. 
When it was time for dinner, the father thought the painted rock was the turtle, and he began to cook it. He stirred and stirred and waited and waited, but something was terribly wrong. This soup would not cook. He was cooking a rock. But where was the turtle? The children told him that the turtle had tricked them, and he had escaped. Now they were sorry they had tricked their father. The next day, their father went back into the forest and searched and searched, but there was no sign of the clever turtle anywhere. In China, there once lived a young field worker named Mei Lin, who dreamed of being a great artist. But he was so poor, he could not buy a brush to paint with. One night, he was visited by an old wizard. You have worked very hard, and you have earned this, he said, handing Mei Lin a beautiful brush. Use it wisely, said the wizard, for it has great power. On his wall, Mei Lin painted a rooster. Suddenly, the rooster leapt off the wall and flew away. It was a powerful brush indeed. The next day, Mei Lin came upon a farmer struggling to plow his rice paddy. With his brush, he painted a water buffalo to pull the plow, and Mei Lin used the brush to help many others. When the greedy Mandarin, who ruled the land, heard of the magic brush, he ordered Mei Lin to paint him a pile of coins. Mei Lin refused, and the Mandarin threw him in jail. That night, Mei Lin used his magic brush to draw a door and escape. But soon the Mandarin caught Mei Lin. This time, he took the brush away. But in his greedy hands, the brush was useless. The Mandarin handed the brush to Mei Lin. Paint me a mountain of gold. Mei Lin painted a mountain of gold in the middle of a great sea. He painted a ship to take the Mandarin to the mountain. When the Mandarin reached the gold, Mei Lin painted a dark cloud, which brought a great storm, destroying the boat and leaving the greedy Mandarin trapped forever, all alone on top of his mountain of gold. Mei Lin had used the brush wisely, indeed. There is more Nick Jr. coming up after this. There's more Nick Jr. coming up, and up, and up! There's more Nick Jr. hopping your way right after this. There's more ahead on <laughs> Nick Jr. Junior presents Think and Sing. Thank <laughs> you. 
watch Bing Can Sing on NickJr.com. Ooh. Ooh. 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, peas and carrots, presenting Joey's Lunch. On today's menu, the bologna sandwich, Mustard. the grapes, and the cookie. Call me oatmeal. Today, a scene from the classic story, Moby Grape. Imagine, we are on a boat deep at sea. Look, it's a giant whale. It's Moby Grape. She blows! I thank you, we must thank you! And that was Joy's lunch. Have you had some fruit today? Ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, boys and girls, nuts and berries. Presenting Joey's Lunch. On today's menu, the classic deli sandwich. Oi, I'm stuffed! The double cheese sticks. I'm Gouda. I'm Swiss. And the plum. Play ball! Today, it's Gouda against Swiss for the final in the Plum Ball Championship. Play ball! Gouda goes out for the approach. Swiss blocks him. Swiss has gotten hold of the plum. She's pulling away from Gouda. And yes, Swiss has scored the goal. Swiss takes home the championship. That was Joey's lunch. Have you had some milk today? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, beans and rice, presenting Joey's lunch. On today's menu, the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. But y'all can call me PB and J. The perfectly ripe banana. No spots here. The juice. And the breath mix. I'm cool, man. Today, a little ditty just for you. Home lunchtime is our favorite time to munch. Time to munch. I'm the tastiest banana in the bunch. In the bunch. Won't you try PB and J? A tasty mint will make your day. It's lunchtime. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. Thanks, y'all. And that was Joey's Lunch. Have y'all had some juice today? Jungle Boogie. Playing. Yummy! <laughs> 
everybody's here today, even the geese. But I still haven't seen old Bess. Hmm, where can she be? There you are. I've looked all over for you. I thought you'd move. See ya. What's that horse? I'll go ask Pig. Sure, I'd love to come over for lunch sometime, but right now I gotta go. Zip. Oh, yes, bye, Piggy. Thanks for having me, sheep. I'll be back. That was the animal farm. I learned all sorts of animal sounds. Here's one of my favorites. Well, gotta fly. See you next time here on Mix. Junior. <laughs> it's time for my show. <laughs> What's the buzz with Philomena Fly? Starring me, Philomena Fly. <laughs> Well, I've been busy buzzing about town with the Buzzy Cam. <laughs> What's the buzz this time? We're going to the car wash, where there are cars and brushes and lots of bubbles. So, before another moment slips by, let me show you what happens there. Three, two, one, go! Whoop, beep, beep! Hey, I know why that green car's here at the car wash. It's dirty! Whoop, car's gotta stop! Scrubby, 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 getting ready for a walk. Scrubby, 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 scrubby all around. So they're scrubbing the hubcaps. Looks like they're using a giant toothbrush. <laughs> ready, set, here we go. Excuse me, are you going to drive through? Mind if I ride along with you? Wow, giant swirly brushes. <laughs> I bet that tickles. <laughs> Whoa, here come the brushes that look like giant noodles. Look at all the here comes the water! Now where are we going? Outside! Thanks for the ride, lady! Wow, it's sparkly clean! You guys did a great job! Thanks! That was the car wash! I loved riding through the soap and water inside the car! Ha! trip to the firehouse where I saw firemen, fire poles, even fire boots. Let me show you what I saw. Three, two, one, go. Whoa, there's a big red fire truck. Whoa. Ooh, doors are open. Boots are waiting. Let's check out what's going on. Huh? See you, not in there. Listen, something's happening. Maybe it's a fire. <laughs> Whoa! Here come the firemen! Oh, better get out of his way. Whoa, here's another one. Oh, see? That's why they leave their boots there. Whoa! Neat jacket. Wish I could fit into one. There they go! Wow, here comes the big red truck! Listen to that siren! Hey, can I come? Come on! Can I? Oh, ooh, okay, probably not a good place for a fly anyway. Hey, good luck, guys! Thanks for the visit! That was the firehouse! Maybe I could help out next time! I could be a firefly! <laughs>
It's time for my show! <laughs> What's the buzz with Philomena Fly? Starring... Me! <laughs> Philomena Fly! <laughs> Philomena's been a busy buddy, buzzing about town with a buzzy cam. What's the buzz this time? This gray, gloppy stuff called cement. I saw a garage being made with it. So, before the cement dries up, let's take a look. Three, two, one, go. Hey, there's a big truck. Watch it spin. <laughs> oh, hey, mister, mister. What's in there? I wonder if that's where the cement comes from. Bingo, here comes the cement. Oh, it looks real smushy. Ooh, whoa, hey. <laughs> Where's that hose go? Let's see, let's see, let's see where the hose is going. Whoa, big old long hose. <laughs> oh, look, they're making a floor for a garage with it. Oh, it looks so smushy now. <laughs> well, I wonder if they mind if I played with it. Probably, because I'd get stuck. Well, they're just about done, aren't they? This is going to be a super floor. <laughs> well, thanks for letting me visit. Hi. That was cement, and I see it everywhere now. It's walls and sidewalks. It's all over. Look around. It makes me go wee. Whoa. <laughs> well, got to fly. See you next time here on Nick Jr. It's time for my show! <clears throat> What's the buzz with Philomena Fly? Starring... <laughs> Me! Philomena Fly! <laughs> As usual, I've been busy buzzing about town with a buzzy cam. <laughs> What's the buzz this time? White, gloppy, smelly paint! And I saw a house being cooked with it! Let me show you what I saw! Three, two, one, go! Well, I can smell the paint from here! Hey, that must be one of the painters way up there! What's that sound? Why is he taking paint off? I thought paint was supposed to go on the house! Ooh, paint getting stirred up! Mixy, mixy, mixy! Whoa, look at all that white shiny stuff! Careful! Hey, try not to get any on my... Oh, got some on my wing! Paint's ready! It's time for work! Hey, careful up there! Hey, wait! Did you forget something? Down the ladder! Up the ladder! Do -do 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 -do. Now, where are you going with that paint? Look at everyone! Everywhere! Everyone! Everywhere is painting! Yay! That house is looking snazzy and white! was a house being painted. Hey, maybe I could brush up on my painting skills and help out next time. <laughs> Wee! Well, we gotta fly. See you next time here on Nick Junior. It's time for my show. <laughs> What's the buzz with Philomena Fly? Starring me, <laughs> Philomena Fly. <laughs> As usual, I've been busy buzzing about town with a buzzy cam. What's the buzz this time? Amazing stuff called bread. And I learned how it's made. So, before another moment zips by, let me show you what I saw. Three, two, one, go! There's a lot going on at the bread bakery. Here's where they mix the dough. <laughs> Whoa, sure is a big bowl they're making it in. Wow, I've never seen such a big pile of dough. Ooh, look, they're cutting it up. I guess there isn't an oven big enough for a pile of dough like that. My favorite's whole wheat bread. Whoa, he's got two loaves at once, see? There you go. Oh, oh, I'll move. I'm in the way. Whoa, look at those sticky rolls. Wow. Oh, back to the bed. Oh, it's brown and warm. Hey, mister, bread's ready. Better take it out of the oven. Mmm, <laughs> beautiful bread. That was bread. 
I love knowing where it comes from. Whee! Whoa! <laughs> well, I gotta fly. See you next time here on Nick Junior. It's time for my show. <laughs> What's the buzz with Philomena Fly? Starring me, <laughs> Philomena Fly. <laughs> As you know, I've been busy buzzing about town with the buddy man. What's the buzz this time? I saw garbage, rubbish, trash, whatever you call it. I saw it all going to a garbage truck. So, before another moment slips by, let me show you the garbage truck. Three, two, one. to run and bite and skate and eat big soft pretzels. Winky, time to go. Cousin April's never been to Central Park, so she's never seen my backyard. And now Nick Jr. takes you to the big city where you'll find Winky love. Hi, I'm Winky. And I'm about to take a ride in a taxi cab. You should be take the bus. Sometimes when we go somewhere really, really special, Mama lets us hail a taxi. That means you raise your arm in the air like this and scream, Taxi! Then a yellow taxi stops and you get in and tell the driver where you want to go. We're going to the museum to see the dinosaurs. Some taxi drivers speak their horns a lot. Some go really, really fast. Some start, stop, start, stop. This one's driving just right. Thank you. Thank you. Riding a taxi cab was one of my favorite things about living in the city. Now Nick Jr. takes you to the big city where you'll find Winky Love. Hi, I'm Winky. I live in a brownstone on the very top floor. Wait up, James! When I come home, I have to climb up a thousand million stairs. One, two, three. When I was little, Mommy used to carry me. Now I do it myself. 18, 19, the man who lives in there plays accordion. The lady in here just had a baby girl. 31, 32, ew, someone's cooking something yucky again. When I get to the step with the gum on it, I know I'm almost there. 
to die. Here's where I live for a Mama, it's me, Winky. Why don't we go for a walk? Going down's a little easier. And now, Nick Jr. takes you to the big city where you'll find Winky love. Hi, I'm Winky. This is my very best friend, Gil. He lives in an apartment right below mine, one floor down. I live in 4A, and Gil lives in 3A. Right, Gil? Gil and me met when we were really, really little. And we've been friends ever since. We played together. We sing together. We made messes together. And sometimes we get in trouble together. But the really, really cool thing is when we're home in our apartments, we can talk to each other through the air vents. What's the magic word today, Gil? Spumoni. <laughs> Gil's the best. I guess that's why he's my very best friend. Hi there, Faith here, and you're watching Nick. Junior! I love colors! Do you know what color this is? It's blue! <laughs> How about this one? It's green! <laughs> now, here's a song all about colors! Can you guess what's coming up next? A song! Right here on Nick Jr. <laughs> Nick Jr. Sings! Sounds! A little girl named Judy Lou Went to her window and she said Yoo-hoo! Has anyone seen my good friend Drew? He's a big brown cow. He goes moo, moo, moo. Just then a sound came to Judy Lou. It went like this. Cock a doo doo. Oh, that's just a rooster, not my good friend Drew. He's a big brown cow. He goes moo, moo, moo. Then another sound came to Judy Lou. It was from next door and it went. <laughs> Oh, well, that's just a baby, not my good friend Drew. He's a big brown cow. He goes moo, moo, moo. Then another noise came to Judy Lou. It was really loud and it went choo, choo. Oh, that's just a train, not my good friend Drew. He's a big brown cow. He goes moo, moo, moo. Just then a noise came to Judy Lou. It was very soft. It went moo, moo. Then it got real loud when she spotted Drew. She was coming home saying moo moo. Where have you been? Asked Judy Lou. Drew replied moo 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 moo. I went to the store to get milk for you. For me? Milk for you. So she gave him a hug and said, I love you. Nick Junior Sings Weather 
You may think it's crazy, but I'm a weather daisy. And here's my weather song, okay Bright sunny days make me smile so wide. It's the right kind of weather to play outside. And when it rains, that's all right too. Cause flowers like showers, at least I do. I love to look at the clouds so high. Cause I might see a whale swimming in the sky. And when those clouds push each other around, you might hear some thunder, that rumbling sound. Clouds can also cause lightning. He did it. No, he did it. Oh, please, stop your fighting. He did it. No, he did it. Oh, I wish you two clouds wouldn't rumble so loud. Can a weather daisy get some peace and quiet round here? Snow is nice and quiet. When the wind starts to blow and the snow falls down, a blanket of white covers all the ground. It's time to wear your hats and boots. But me, I just shiver right down to my roots. So whether it's cold or whether it's hot, there'll always be weather, whether you like it or not. Hey, the sun's coming out. Nick. Julia. Bigger than you. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a duck. Quack, quack. <laughs>